so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will solve problem c that is almost all multiples from code forces around 836 i will also make a video on problem d so stay tuned for that as well now let's move on to the solution but before we move on to the solution i want to tell you guys about newton school coding contest so newton school organizes coding contest every month you guys can solve some quality problems and also compete against top coders in the world this will be a good opportunity to benchmark yourself where you guys are lying in respect to other students in India or around the world. And not only that, along with this, you can also win some cash prizes. You can win rewards up to rupees 90,000. You can also win scholarships up to rupees 20,000. And along with this, there will also be some job opportunities. So this month, the contest will be on 30th of November. It will be around two and a half hours from 9 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. So do not forget to sign up. Uh, the link will be in the description. So do go and sign up from there. So in the problem, we have been given two variables, n and x. Both of them are up to 10 to the power 5. And then we have been asked to find the lexicographically minimum permutation of length n. Let's say it is something like p1, p2, p3, so on up to pn such that p1 is equal to x your last element pn is equal to 1 and all the elements from p2 up to pn minus 1 are such that pi is a multiple of phi right so that means your permutation must start with the element x it must end with 1 and all the elements in the middle that is from p2 up to pn minus 1 must be a multiple of their index right so pi must be a multiple of phi and you have to find the lexicographically minimum permutation of such kind or report minus 1 if it's impossible or minus 1 if it's impossible so that is the entire problem now let's see how we can solve this so now let's move on to the observations and the solutions The very first observation that we need to solve this problem is that for the answer to exist n must be a multiple of x right that is n modulo x should be equal to 0 now how can I prove this so let's start with the identity permutation right so we have the identity permutation to begin with so something like one two three so on up to we have x somewhere in the middle and then we have up to n right so in our given permutation we must have p1 equal to x and pn equal to one right so we will remove this x we will remove this one i will place this x on the starting and I will place this one at the end, right? So my one is at the end. So now my index x is empty, right? Now this block is empty and I have to place n somewhere, right? Because I removed n from the end. So now I have to place n somewhere. And if I want to place n at this index x, right? So if I want to place n at index x, then n must be a multiple of x right otherwise i cannot place n at in the index x now you guys can make an argument that maybe n should be placed somewhere else right so now let's talk about that case also so all the elements from 2 up to x minus 1 all of these elements are less than x so they cannot they cannot be multiples of x obviously right so let's say there is some element y in this range right so let's say there is some element y which is greater than x and let's say y is a multiple of x right so then what i can do is i can take y remove y from index y and place it at x right so if i redraw this if i redraw this i will get something like x two three so on up to here this is index x 
this is let's say index y and it is ending at 1 so i took y from here and placed it at index x right so now my y is here and i still have my n right so now you guys can make an argument that i can place n at index y now but if you think about it if i am placing y at x that means y is a multiple of x right and now if i want to place n at y that will mean that my n is a multiple of y right so if my y is a multiple of x and my n is a multiple of y that basically means that my n is a multiple of x right that is the same thing so this just means n is a multiple of x right so you can see that for the answer to exist if i want to place anywhere n right my n has to be multiple of x otherwise i will not be able to place n anywhere so that is the very first observation for the answer to exist my n must be a multiple of x right so now let's use this observation to solve the problem so now let's start with the identity permutation again so now we again have the identity permutation and now we know that n is a multiple of x right now we know this thing so we have 1 2 3 so on up to x then so on up to n so now i can remove x i can remove n and i can remove 1 i can place x here i can place n here and i can place 1 here so now my this permutation will always be an answer right my this permutation is one of the possible answers but in the problem we have been told to find the lexicographically minimum permutation right in the problem we have been asked to find the lexicographically minimal permutation so now let's work on this permutation right so now let's try to work on this and try to make this permutation lexicographically minimal now how can we do this so i will uh, so let's redraw this and let's see how we can make this permutation as small as possible so we have x 2 3 4 so on up to x minus 1 then we have n then we have x plus 2 so on up to 1 right so if we think about these elements right these elements are fixed right they cannot move anywhere because if you want to place 2 there is only one index that 2 can be placed at here right you cannot place 2 anywhere else similarly for 3 similarly for 4 and so on up to x minus 1 right so all of the elements from 2 up to x minus 1 are fixed but for values that are greater than or equal to x plus 2 for example these values that are greater than or equal to x plus 2 right i can move these values into n right i can swap these values with n like i showed you previously in this example where we placed y in place of n and then placed n at index y right similarly for values that are greater than or equal to x plus 2 we can try to swap these values with n and try to make this permutation lexicographically smaller right so to do this i want to make this permutation lexicographically minimal right so at index x i will try to find the smallest multiple so i will try to find the smallest multiple of x right i will try to find the smallest multiple of x let's say it is equal to y such that n is divisible by y or you can say n modulo y is equal to equal to 0 right so i will try to find some index y such that y is a multiple of x and n is divisible by y and then i can swap these two values so i will swap n with y 
so then I will get some new permutation something like this I will get x 2 3 4 then I will get value y at index x then I will get value n at index y and so on till up to 1 then I can do the same thing at index y then at index y I can try to find the smallest multiple of y let's call it z such that n modulo z is equal to equal to 0 right so I will try to find some index z then I will put z here and I will shift n to the back so you can see that I am shifting n to the end and this will help me to, to make my sequence of a permutation lexicographically smaller right so I will have x 2 3 4 so on up to then y at index x then uh, z at index y and then n at some index z and then I can keep doing the same thing for z until I reach some index where I am no more able to find the multiples right so that is my entire approach and that is how you will make your sequence of a mutation lexicographically minimal because you took your n and shifted it as backwards as you could have right so this is the most optimal or you can say the lexicographically minimal per permutation that you could have gotten right so that is the entire solution and if i have to write it uh, let's say so let me give you a brief summary how you can do this so first of all you will check if your n module x is equal to equal to zero or not if it is not then the answer is impossible and if it is then we'll first of all create the anti permutation that is p of i is equal to i right then you will set your p of 1 equal to x you will set your p of n equal to 1 and you will set your p of x equal to n right then for value of x right you will try to find smallest multiple right so find smallest multiple of x right such that let's call this y right find smallest multiple of x that is equal to y such that n modulo y is equal to equal to 0 right and then you will swap your values right so you can say swap values of px and py right so your value of py will come to px or you can also say or you can also say just that your p of x is equal to uh, p of y and your p of y is equal to n right that is the same thing or you can also say swap px and swap py right that is also the same thing and then you can set your x equal to y right because now we have found the smallest multiple of x now we need to do the same thing for y so you can set your x equal to y and do the same thing again and you can say set x equal to y and do the same thing again right so that is the entire process how you will solve this and if you guys want to see the code for this let me show you the code here is the code so first of all i will take into integers n and x right these are my inputs then i will set the nt permutation so v of i is equal to i plus one then i will set v of n minus one is equal to one v of zero is equal to x then if my n modulo x is not equal to zero then the answer is minus one and if n modulo x is equal to 0 then I will set v of x minus 1 equal to n right so these are the these three things right these three things then I will go from 2 up to n and if my index is equal to x I will go over all the multiples right I will keep multiplying until I find some multiples such that n modulo multiple is not equal to 0 right I will keep going until n modulo multiple is not equal to 0 
and when I find some multiple that such that n modulo multiple is equal to equal to zero, I will break out of the while loop, right? So then I will check if my n modulo multiple is equal to equal to zero and my multiple is less than n. Then I will swap the values of my v of x and v of multiple, right? So basically this step. So I'm swapping values of px and py. And then I will set my x equal to multiple, right? So now I have done the thing for x. Now I need to do the same thing for y, right? So I will set my x equal to y and then tell it do the same thing again. So now I'll set x equal to multiple and then it will again run the loop. And then whenever we find multiple, it will do the same thing for multiple again and, and, and again and again. And it will keep shifting n to the end. And this way we'll get the lexicographically minimal permutation.